Hey guys, Stephen Cox here, and today we've got an interesting lesson. <clears throat> We're going to be playing stuff on one string. So you might ask, why would we learn songs on one string? What's the benefit of that? And honestly, <laughs> there are several benefits for learning a song on one string. Sorry, I'm having an allergic reaction to something, so I apologize for... <clears throat> I have to clear my throat or sneeze a few times, just know that. But um, <clears throat> basically, we can play a song on one string like a blues. But why would we want to do that? So two reasons. One, I've actually had strings break on gigs before. I know with bass, it's a lot more rare than with guitar, but occasionally strings still break. So because of that, we want to be able to play our patterns that we'd normally play on three different strings, <clears throat> be able to play them on two different strings or even one string for that reason. So is it necessary a lot of the time for that reason? No, but um, there are some other benefits too. One benefit is that we can see the intervals on one string as we play. So for instance, going from the open A string to the fourth fret on the A string, you can kind of see that it's plus four frets for a major third and plus three, th three frets for a minor third. And we'll talk more about that if that doesn't make any sense to you. Um, what I mean by major and minor third, those are called intervals. We'll talk more about those in a little bit. But the important thing is you can see these different distances between notes on the strings. And then also it teaches us how to play in positions down the neck rather than just across the neck. So, um, and it also gets us playing on the higher frets and just out of our little boxes down here. So <clears throat> we'll start with just a major scale on one string. I actually have a video that goes a little bit more in depth on this, but we will go fairly quickly just so we introduce the idea of whole steps and half steps. But basically we'll start on the open A string for now. And when we skip over fret, we call that a whole step. So if we go from zero to two, we skipped over fret one, if that makes sense. So we're going to go a whole step up. Then we're going to go another whole step up from this note. So we end up with the open string going up a whole step brings us to two. Going up a whole step brings us to the fourth fret. Then we're going to do what's called a half step, which just means going up one fret, not skipping one. So from four to five fret wise, that's a half step. So we've got whole, whole, half. Then we're going to do some more whole steps. We end up doing three of them in a row. Whole step, whole step, whole step. And then finally, we're going to end with a half step. So right now I'm just using one finger to show you the example, but we could also, once we get that down, play it with much less shifts. And uh, we can get the first four notes really by leaving our left hand in one position. because so we can play the open string. Then when we go up to that whole step, um, we can play that with the pointer finger. Then we can play the next note with the ring finger, and the next note with the pinky. And if we want to, we can shift up to get the next note. And remember, that one's a whole step again. And then we've got a whole bunch of options here. One option is we could stretch our finger. And, and by stretching our hand out that much, we could theoretically get all those notes out. But that's a little bit uncomfortable. So what I like to do <clears throat> is either do that in one position and do the next part in one position. Or you can even go get these three notes with just a smaller stretch and then just shift up for the last note. But, uh, oh, and there's a third option that I actually like the best. So we start on this note, we just immediately shift again and get those last three notes in a comfortable position at the end. So we'd have single note, single note. But the point is just getting used to playing up one string and the challenges here are those shifts are going to sound like, like a major movement. And so it's kind of hard to get those shifts to sound as smooth as you, as you would get them if you're playing on different strings. Especially that one. So you just got to move kind of fast, 
and you don't want to cut this note super short to move to that note because then you'll end up with like right and we don't really want that so um you just got to get used to going from here as smooth as you can and that's the fifth fret on the a string going to the seventh fret on the a string but i'm using my pinky on the fifth fret and then having to shift to the pointer finger for the next few notes Here's the shift, right? And we shift again. To me, that's the best way to play it because um, you're shifting on a strong finger, your pointer finger, and then you're getting as many notes out of one position as possible. And hey, everybody, how are you guys doing? I see Zach, and I see, does that say Scrolly? And Big Daddy Euchre. Hey, I hope y'all are doing doing well. It's nice to see a couple of you um, are different faces, I guess, because this is a Thursday one. And I just want to let everybody know that my live streams have officially moved to Thursdays because wedding season has come back. Um, a lot of people that had rescheduled their weddings from before or to now, and I play bass in a wedding band. So because of that, we're going to be doing these on Thursdays for the time being. And I might just leave them on Thursdays if that works for everybody. All right. Well, let's jump back to it. So now we've got our major scale going up there. Whoops, I did it the different way, but you get the idea on those last few notes. Um, we could learn arpeggios on one string. So what an arpeggio is, is the first note, the third note, and the fifth note of a major scale. So if we were going, right, we got our first note, then that's our third note, and that's our fifth note. So instead of playing all that in that position, what I would do now that I know what the notes are is I would just see if I can reach as many of those notes in one position as possible. I find out if I'm doing the open A string, then I can shift up to the fourth fret, and then I can use my pinky to get that last note without having to shift again. So it ends up being O, four, seven. <clears throat> and so things to note here are, um, we're doing the first note of the scale to the third note of the scale, we're going to call that a major third because it's going from the first note of the scale to the third note of the scale in a major scale. So that interval, which is the distance between two notes, is called a major third. So if you notice, a major third is skipping up two whole steps from a single note. So we got this. We're going to skip over that one and skip over that one. So we got one whole step, two whole steps, but we're only going to play the second one. So that's that distance of a major third. So knowing that it's two whole steps, which is really like four frets. You're adding four frets to the first note. So if you have open, think of that as zero. Zero plus four equals four. So if we're going a major third up, we're adding four frets. But that ends up being two whole steps that we're moving. OK. And um, then after that, from the fourth fret to the seventh fret, this is called a minor third. This distance from this note to that note. Because if we were to play a minor scale, it would be the first note to the third note of a minor scale. Just kind of trust me on that. But the point is, if you ha have a major third, and then from here you have a minor third, that stack is a major arpeggio in full. So we've got a major arpeggio. So let's try that in a different spot. Instead of starting on the open string, let's start on the fifth fret. So first we're going to have our major third, because we're going to do another major arpeggio. This time it's going to be a D major arpeggio. A minute ago we were playing an A major arpeggio on one string. And that's what it's going to sound like. So we start on the fifth fret. We're going to go up a major third, which once again is two whole steps. You could also think of that as four frets. So if I'm on the fifth fret right now, I'm going to add four, end up on the ninth fret. Five plus four is nine. That's the simple math, right? And then after that, we've got a minor third above that. And I didn't mention the distance of a minor third a minute ago, but it's the distance of a whole step plus a half step. So instead of being four frets away, it ends up being three frets away. So you add three to whatever you're on. So if I'm on the ninth fret, if I add three, nine plus three is 12. I'll end up on the 12th fret up here. So at first, it might be kind of hard to do that shift going from the 5th fret to the ninth fret. So you just got to eyeball it, 
know that it's that far away, try to get your mind to visually see the two hole steps. So, so it's not just like, Oh, I'm trying to land on nine, but you're getting the concept of that distance, being able to see it and being able to move through it fairly quickly and fairly smoothly. Oops. That wasn't very smooth, but you get the idea. There we go. So there's a reason why I did the major arpeggio here. We're going to do what's called a one, four, five progression. And if you don't know what that means, I have um, a video about how to learn songs on the spot that you can watch on my YouTube channel. And then I have another video um, that just teaches the scale, but basically a one, four, five chord progression in A, we would have a chord built off of the first note of the scale, which is an A note, and then one, two, three, four. Then we're, for our four chord, we'd have a chord built off of our D note and a chord built of our off our E note, which is the fifth note of the scale. So one, four, five. We have a major chord built off of the first note of the scale, then a major chord built off of the fourth note, then a major chord built off of the fifth note. So that ends up being an A major chord, a D major chord, and an E major chord. I know right now I'm playing single notes, but if someone was playing along with you and they were playing a chordal instrument, they'd be strumming those chords. What we're going to do instead is we're going to play the individual notes that make up that chord, which is these major arpeggios that we're talking about. So that's why I'm teaching these, these specific ones, starting on the open string, now starting on the fourth fret. So now we're going to do one starting on the, sorry, starting on the fourth note of the major scale, which happens to be the fifth fret. So, you know, um, so the open string, the fifth fret, and the seventh fret is going to be our starting point for these arpeggios. Did I lose anybody there? Is everybody following me on this? Let me know in the comments. All right. It seems like one person loves the, uh, Zach seems to really like the Thursdays, so that's good. Good feedback. Hi, Jeff. How's it going? Cool. Well, I'm glad that I'm glad that you guys can check it out. And for the people on Saturday that can't check it out on Thursdays, it'll still be up on Saturday because I'm leaving these up. But we've got this. Right. So those are our two our two arpeggios. Well, I didn't tell you that I was going to go back down the arpeggio. So let me just do what we've actually done so far. And now we need an arpeggio starting on the seventh fret. So we're going to do that major arpeggio. So we, we start on the seventh fret on the A string. We're going to go up a major third, which means two whole steps, right? So seven, two whole steps is four frets up. So we're going to add four to seven. We end up with 11. And then hopefully you can reach this note on your U bass. You may have to shift up to get to it because of the body being there. On the Journeyman, I have the nice little cutaway so I can reach up pretty easily. If you don't have that, you just may have to like change your technique a little bit to reach up over where the body starts on the instrument. Okay, so 7, 11. Now we need a minor third up from there. So we do 11 plus 3 frets, which is a whole step plus a half step. That's called a minor third. And we end up on the 14th fret. So you can go up it, you can go 7, 11, 14, and then you can go back down it. 14, 11, 7, and why don't we just turn around and only hit the high note once? 7, 11, 14, 11, 7. Just to get a, comfortable with those shifts and really get that idea. So now what we're going to do with these arpeggios is we're going to go up the arpeggio and come back to the middle note of it. And this is just a bass line that sounds kind of cool. And we're just going to do that on each chord. So we've got and we can end it with the first one again. So that's kind of a cool way to get comfortable with all these different positions, trying to shift smoothly on one string that involves you having to eyeball the next note before getting to it. So you're thinking slightly ahead. And so those are a lot of things to think about at once. Um, if, if this seems a little bit too advanced for you, you can go back and do some of the other beginner stuff on here. But this is still pretty beginner stuff, really. Um, it's just it involves a little bit of math and a little bit of thinking as you're going and a little bit of just looking ahead to what the next note is. 
So does anybody have any questions about any of this so far? I expect things like, you know, what's an arpeggio or um, where can I find more information on scales? And right now we're just doing major arpeggios. You could also do this with minor arpeggios, which a minor arpeggio will have the minor third first and then the major third second. So for instance, instead of going zero to four to seven, where we were going two whole steps up and then a whole step plus a half step up or a major third and then a minor third, we could just swap which third we do first. We go open, we're gonna go to a minor third first, which means only going up three frets. And then when we go up to a major third after that, we're adding four frets. So you hear that difference? Boom, 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 versus boom, 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 boom. And because it's the same thing, we're just swapping the steps, you end up on the same fret when you're high when you're at the highest point of that arpeggio. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, cool. So Zach's good so far. Thanks for letting me know. But if you have any questions, please let me know because there are probably some other people watching that'll have the same questions. Okay, so once we've got that, we can play this cool little line. Okay, so that time I, I did the first arpeggio on the one chord, then I did the second arpeggio on the four chord, then I did the third arpeggio on the five chord, and then I came back to the arpeggio on the four chord before ending. So that's a common progression. That's a one, four, five, four, and then back to one to start over again. So let's do that one together. And we're just gonna do an arpeggio in each spot. One, two, three on the A string, four. To the four chord. Here we go, five. Back to the four chord. end it. All right, so that might be a little bit tricky to just jump in and play, but when the replay happens, you can go back and you can slow the video down using the controls. Um, YouTube has settings where you can cut stuff into half speed or a quarter speed or 75% uh, speed, and then if you felt like that was too slow, you can always speed it up, and uh, it's kind of fun. Sometimes when I watch other people's videos, I watch them sped up, but uh, it's just kind of funny sometimes, so you could always do that as well. Let me know if you find it funny when you do that. But uh, anyway, we'll keep going from there. So now we've got our arpeggios. We understand the idea of major thirds and minor thirds, hopefully a little bit. Now let's play a line that we're probably all familiar with hearing. So a lot of people ask me what song this is. And the reason that it's hard to answer is because it's been used in a lot of different songs. It's really a blues pattern. And I don't know the complete history of that line. If somebody knows where it first appeared, that would be pretty cool if there's a Wikipedia article or something that, that does that. But um, there was a song that had a line very similar to this that I was playing at a gig, and I had to be able to play those notes, and the D string broke. And we were in the key of A like this, and so I, I normally would have gone like... It may not have been this song. I may be remembering that part wrong because it was like 10 years ago. But anyway, the idea was the D string broke. And I'm like, uh, I don't have time to change the string. The show must go on kind of thing. So I have to think on my toes, where would those notes have been over here using these intervals that we're talking about? Well, here, if you know how to play a major scale across three strings, Or if you know the note names, it could help you there. But um, basically, that first note to the next note was a major, th a major third, and then that next note would have been the fifth note of the scale. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. The arpeggio gets me through that. Then we would have had the sixth note of the scale, and then the, se uh, the seventh note of the scale flatted. So instead of playing, we just subtract one fret from the seventh note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh note, and we just want to move it backwards one fret. And that makes it sound a little bit more bluesy. There's that note. So um, so we've got that. We've got the root of the scale, so the first note of the scale, third note, 
fifth note, sixth note, flat seven, six, five, back to the third note. So we can do that all in one string. Open A, go up a major third, go up a minor third, then go up a whole step to the sixth note, because between the fifth note of the scale and the sixth note of the scale is a whole step. And then the flat seven is only going to be a half step away from there. And then back to the um, sixth note of the scale, just back down the notes that we came up. So once you get the notes on the way up, just remember them for the way down. So that'll be open four, seven, nine, ten, nine, seven, four. And those are the fret numbers. So one more time, the frets are zero, four, seven, nine, ten, nine, seven, four. And notice that I'm getting the first three notes all out of one position. And then just whatever you want to do for these last two notes, just make sure they're, you're not shifting for each individual one. You could do that, you could do that, or you could do that. So the, either I'm using my pointer finger, middle finger, my middle finger, my ring finger, or my ring finger, my pinky. Since it's just two notes in that position, it doesn't matter which one to use. So go with just what feels comfortable for you. See, so I can do it a variety of different ways. whatever you think you can get it smoother. So for me, that last one wouldn't have been good, right? Because that shift was just a little, little too much for me and I actually got some buzz out of the note because of that. But uh, you get the idea on that. So <clears throat> we do that two times. One more time. And then if you know the 12 bar blues, we would end up starting on our four chord and doing the same pattern. So our four chord is the fourth note of the major scale that we're in. One, two, three, four. Oh, hey, that's D. We remember that from the arpeggios, I'm sure. So then we could do the same thing here. Now, on a lot of the U basses, the notes way up high are a little bit tricky. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to do this completely um, here, but you could always go back to the other pattern. You know, this is just an exercise to get you used to playing on one string. So if you don't have enough frets to do that, two options are play it on the next string down anyway, or move those notes down an octave when they get too high for you. Because if they get too high, they're probably above the 12th fret. And so if you know the note names of the notes above the 12th fret, think of the 12th fret as like the open string. So like, uh, so this is kind of confusing, but the 12th fret is the same note an octave up of the open string. So you could go like, Which is kind of weird but it's a little more difficult so if, if it's too hard to do just practice the first part of the pattern for now just getting used to the idea of it and you could also do the same thing since our four chord is is uh our fourth note of the scale is d you could also just do that same thing we did on the a string on the open d string right okay so um we're going to start on that D note. Then we're going to go up a major third, which is two whole steps. One, two. That makes sense. I didn't play the middle one, but it's, and we're not going to. But we're going to go two whole steps up from that note, which remember the whole steps are the ones where we skip over a fret. OK. A lot of stuff to keep in mind here. So it helps to have some of these basics down before going through all this stuff. OK. So we end up on the ninth fret because we were on the fifth fret. We added four frets. We're on the ninth fret. Then we do our minor third. That brings us up to the 12th fret. And then now we're on the 14th fret and the 15th fret. And so those are kind of tricky on a lot of the rubber string U basses. You might get a little bit of buzz. But um, if you have the round wounds or the flat wounds, or if you just have a really well well-made U bass, you know, maybe one of the higher end ones, it, sh it shouldn't buzz at all, but you may have to do an adjustment on the neck to get those notes not to buzz. And then we just go back down and we only do this pattern one time. So fret wise, this is fifth, ninth, 12th, 14th, 15th, 14th, 12th, ninth. And we just do that pattern once. Let's do that together. One, two, Three, four.
Okay, then we go back to our first pattern once. For time's sake, we won't go through that again. So now we're gonna go to the five chord, and this time we're just gonna do that arpeggio that we did from the last exercise, because we only have half of a pattern instead of a full pattern. So we only have enough room to really go. And then we gotta go on to the next chord. So if you remember that, that was the seventh fret, then going up a major third, 11th fret, and then a minor third up from there is the 14th fret, and then back down. Okay, so we got back to that middle note. And then now we're gonna go to the four chord and do an arpeggio. So that's gonna be starting on the fifth fret. That's our D note. Then we're gonna go up a major third, up a minor third, and then back to the middle note. So let's do those two arpeggios together, starting on the E, which is the seventh fret on the A string. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then we're gonna end by doing a little walk up into the fifth note of the scale. So we're gonna start with the um, open A string. Then we're gonna go up a major third. And then from here, we're just gonna go chromatically, which means only half steps, don't skip any frets. And so we're just gonna use our pointer finger, then middle finger, ring finger, and pinky in a row. And then we hit that last note a second time. So that ending is bum, 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 bum. And just remember that rhythm. That last, that last little part has a, uh, it's beat one and then the and after beat two. So one, two, three, four, one, two, and. Okay. So does anybody have any questions? I'm wondering if the comments are coming through on here. I see that there are people watching, but I don't see very many comments. Just want to make sure you guys are still hanging in with me and that the uh, that YouTube is showing me all the comments. We're going to go through the whole blues pattern now. So if you want to do that first, you can do that. But leave me a comment. Say, hey, let me know that you're still here. And uh, let's do this. One, two, three, four. Same pattern. Now we're going to start on the four chord. And that first pattern. Five chord arpeggio, back down, four chord, and then that walk up. One and two and three. I should have mentioned that the eighth note, you know, there's only one little eighth note part at the end is swung. So that's the whole thing. All right, guys, glad y'all are doing good. Cool, cool, cool. I did a video on the same topic where I did this blues thing a year ago, and I called it the one string blues challenge. And I think it'd be cool to revive the one string blues challenge. And I, I may at some point link to the Facebook um, group that I have, just my, my personal Facebook page. Um, and if it lets you comment videos on it, I may have to make a group for this. I'll let you guys know um, in the description on a, one of the next few days, if I decide to do this, but um it might be kind of cool. You just do this blues pattern that we just went over. <laughs> ah, I can't do it that fast, apparently. But you get the idea. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it that fast, but you get the idea. So you could practice going slower than that, but just playing through it. I'm going to try it one more time and see if I can get it fast and give all my attention to it. I can't do it that fast. I'll do it a little slower. But if you can get it up to that speed, and if you can do it fast like I was trying to do, if you practice it enough, you can probably get it faster than that too. Um, then you could post it and it would just be like a fun little challenge that we can do. So I'll try to let you guys know where I'm not sure if I have to make a Facebook group for the page or not, but, um, 
if you can leave comments with video on page posts, then that would probably be be better. And what I'll do is make a post with with just this little section of the blues challenge. And um, you guys can post it there. And I'll try to leave a link for it. But I think that'd be fun. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, doing it that fast on one, one string is tricky. So notice how I gave you like a good fingering solution to do that. But when I tried to do it fast, I couldn't. Um, that's because I haven't practiced it up to speed. So what I would do if I wanted to play it that fast is I would start super slow, like we've been doing, and just like really, really get that down and then gradually speed speed it up with the metronome. Because um, I think it would take me just a little bit more work, especially when I get to here. Like doing that quickly and accurately is kind of tricky. So, so you get the idea. And then doing all that stuff back to back is just like that, ah, right? You, get, you, you almost get dizzy looking back and forth so much. So you can hear this little buzz here and there, but and I, I did some some silly fingerings on there, but you get the idea. Um, so that's that lose one. But that might be a fun challenge. And, you know, if you want to challenge yourself to go faster, just be patient with yourself and work it up slowly with the metronome and you'll have better, better luck than I did. <laughs> Jeff, blues sound good on rubber strings. Good. I'm glad you like the blues on there. Oh yeah, you could post links on YouTube, but so I know sometimes they get kind of weird about it and sometimes they flag the comments as spam before I see them. Um, usually they, they give me the choice and I think I can let people know. So we might be able to do it that way as well, um, but there, there may be a better way. So I'll just, see, I'll just see what I can do and see if I can figure out where that post might be best. And uh, <clears throat> honestly, we may want to do it to a certain tempo because if we all play it at the same tempo, I could chop them up and put them together, which would be kind of cool and post it as part of part of one of the next week's videos or the week after or something. So, uh, or just somewhere halfway throughout the week, but it might be kind of fun. So I just, just thought that that would be a cool thing to do. All right. Let's see. Does it say Marcos? Marcos, congratulations on the new journey, man. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I like the one in black too. I feel like if you do like rockabilly, that is like the perfect rockabilly U bass. And you could play it like vertically or something instead of uh, instead of horizontally and do all that like you know all that stuff. Slap slap the strings a little bit like an upright player would, but um, that's a whole different story. Okay, so now that we've got the blues line, we can do something that's a little bit easier. We can play like a country line. But the thing about country is you're doing root to fifth. So a fifth is further than the thirds, right? In fact, it's what we were doing when we went from zero to seven. It's seven frets away when it's on one string. Whereas when you do it on two strings, it's only two frets away. So like if you play the open A string and the second fret on the D string, that's a fifth. But in order to get that note onto the A string, we have to add five frets to it. So we end up with the seventh fret. So a fifth on one string is any note plus seven frets. So you could think of it as a major third plus a minor third. So you go up that major third, and then from that note, you go up a minor third, four frets, then three frets up. Or you could just think of it as plus seven half steps, which is plus seven frets. So um, that's why I saved this one. Even though country lines are easier than the blues, that math is just a just a slightly larger number, so I just thought it would be good to to do them in that order for that reason. So we got, and so we could do a one four five this way too, which would be starting on A, then starting on the fifth fret on A, which happens to be a D note. That would be our four chord, right? So that's the fifth fret. So we got to add seven. We end up on the twelfth fret here. So that seems like a little too much, right? Which is a great accuracy exercise. You could tell I got some fret buzz because I was slightly too far back on the fret. To not get that buzz, you want to be right in the middle of the fret. 
um, especially with the rubber strings. So it's like, it, it helps you work on your accuracy going from the fifth fret to the seventh fret. Sorry, to the fifth fret to the 12th fret. Um, so that's, that's going up the interval of a fifth which happens to be seven frets when you do it on one string. Okay. And then we could do the same thing from the ninth fret, which would be, uh, sorry, the seventh fret, I apologize. And seven plus seven is 14. So we have the seventh fret and then a fifth away from it is the 14th fret. So if that isn't hard enough, <laughs> then I don't know what is, but that would be a really good exercise for getting you to accurately shift to other notes. You have to eyeball the note and try to try to get your finger right in between the frets very accurately in time. So you could do this one with the metronome too. If it's clicking along, you got boom, boom. Right, so we've got that. Or we could do, oops. We could add a little ending to it too, which I think we'll do in a second. But first, let's just get these idea of fifth sounds. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do the one chord two times. Then we're going to do the four chord two times. Then we're going to do the five chord uh, two times. And then the one chord two times to end it. So we've got our one, our four, our five, and back to our one chord. And we're doing two root fifth motions on each one. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's the whole thing. Now, if we want to make it a little bit different, we can actually make it a little bit easier. You can go up to the fifth or you can go down to the fifth. Now, with our first one, since we're trying to stay on one string, we don't want to go down to the E note, down to the lower octave E note. So we'll keep that one where it was instead of going. But when we get to the D note, when we are going from 5 to 12, the 12th fret on any string is the same as the open string, just an octave higher. So why don't we replace that note with the open A string? So, so far we've got... So now what we'll do is we'll go to the seventh fret because that's our five where our five chord starts. And then instead of going up, because that's in guitar territory, why don't we go down? So that was the 14th fret. Well, we know that 12 was the same as zero. So 12 minus 12 is zero. So let's do 14 minus 12 to get this note down an octave. So that ends up being the second fret because 14 minus 12 is two. So we end up with if we wanted to, um, and then back to the first chord. So let's do that first, and then we'll add a cool little ending to it. One, two, three, all the way through, four. So we've got that. So now this time I want to, on that, that last time through the five chord, right here, sorry, we got two options. We can walk up or we can go, oh, sorry. Um, actually, I don't like that ending really. So let's do, um, so that little country ending, but doing it all in one string. So first, let's talk about what we did here. We're on the fifth note of the A major scale. So that walk down that I'm doing to get from the five chord to the one chord is literally just five, four, three, two, one, notes of the major scale. Fifth, fourth, third, second, first, notes of the major scale. So that's not the frets. The fret numbers are seven, five, four, two, and then you're back to open. And then from there, we can do our root fifth on the one chord. And then we're going to go to the high version of the A. And we're going to go root fifth root, or of the major scale, eighth note, fifth note, first note. In other words, fret-wise, 12, 
seven, open. So I just gave you a lot of information, three ways to say the same thing, basically. Um, it just depends on what level you are with your music theory. Um, if you want to learn all three of, of, of the whys behind what I'm saying, or if you want to just stick to frets, you can stick to frets. But uh, yeah, so now we're going we're gonna to do the pattern using our root fifth, then going down to the fifth here. Then on the five chord, we're going to go down to the fifth. And we're going to do that walk down. So in, that walk down happens in the place of the second root fifth of, um, you know, where we normally would have gone boom, 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 boom. We're still going to do the first half of that. Boom, boom. And now we're going to do eighth notes so we can cram more notes in here. Boom, 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 boom. When we go down the scale there. And then when we, when we get back to the open, that's our root. So then we'll hit our fifth of the root, which is that seventh fret. And then we'll add that little ending, which is kind of hard to do on one string because it's quicker. 12, seven, open. That'll be our ending. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. I'm gonna play through it. If you caught it, great, play along with me. And if you didn't, just rewind this back on the replay. One, two, three, four. So now you got a nice little country line that you can play on one string. This might be helpful also if you were doing like a wash tub bass and you only had one string to work with. Um, if, if somebody made a neck that had frets on it so you didn't just have to lean it in and out, there's some modified ones that are like that. And then there's some people that make one string instruments. And so it might be kind of kind of fun to use that and be able to do this if you only had one string on the bass. So that is a cool thing that you can do. And does anybody have any questions about any of that stuff up to this point? And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and look through, through these comments real quick. All right. What tempo were you playing at, or what would be the normal tempo? OK. I'm not exactly sure what tempo I'm playing at, but I can do a tap tempo to figure this out. Um, are you talking about on the blues or on the country line? Because I think I was doing different tempos on both of those. So um, I'll try to give you just a nice comfortable tempo. I want to say that we could do like 60 might be good. So let me let me see what 60 is like to start out. So this would be a good tempo, 60 beats per minute for the country line. So let's do it here. One, two, three, four. It's a little slower. Here's the walk down and the ending. So that would be a good place to start there. And then with the uh, blues pattern, dun, 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 probably 120, so probably doubling that, that speed, which would be. That'd be a good goal to shoot for. Of course, for the challenge, we could make it a little bit slower than that because that's that's kind of kind of a little bit fast. I think you know you have to really work at getting those shifts sound to get that, and that might take take quite a while. So why don't we make that one a hundred for the goal? So if we do the challenge, your goal is to do the challenge at a hundred beats per minute, and you can have a metronome in the back, or you can do like a uh, you can put the headphone in and put that in your ear. But let's let's go ahead and do that. And if you guys want to share it below on this video for now, that's fine but I'll probably make a Facebook post about it too on um, my, my Facebook is Stephen Cox music. So facebook.com slash Stephen Cox music instead of Stephen Cox space. But um, I'll try to make a post for that. And then you can just, you know, do a comment on that post and post that. And if, if for some reason that doesn't work, uh, I'll take them on YouTube too. That'll make it easier. So a hundred beats per minute is the goal. Just write down below. So um, that's doing that. Got blues on one string. Got 
Yeah. So see, that's the thing when you do when you do the blues um, on here, you can tell that my fingers aren't accustomed to any one of those patterns. I didn't decide strongly on on which ones to use, so my hands just do what they feel like is comfortable. I think it's it's very important for you guys if you want to be able to build speed on it quicker to not do that. Go with the fingers that I showed you, pick them. And then if you do your own thing on the, on those two notes, make sure it's consistent every time. And I think that'll help you to be able to look forward and get the other, the other notes out and be able to work it up to speed. But I think 100 is a good speed for that one. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Gives you enough time to think about the fingerings. Not really while talking. <laughs> do you think that's a good tempo or do you think that's too fast? Does anybody want to want to do it at a slower tempo that wants to actually partake on this? So I think 120 for the country and um and let's do 100 for the blues for, for the um, challenge. So 100 beats per minute for the blues. Awesome. All right, all right. So I was thinking it might be cool to throw you guys a jazz walking line too. This will not be part of the challenge, but just since we have time, I was wondering if, if it would, you know, if, if there'd be enough time to do this. But we could do a walking bass line, and walking bass lines are built off of the chord progression two, five, one. So um, we talked about how to walk a few weeks ago on the live stream. Right now, since we're on the A string, why don't we just continue staying on the A string for this entire for this entire time? Uh, we're going to stay in the key of A major, like we went over at the beginning of the uh, lesson. So. We're going to do a two, five, one in A major. So an A, our two, is a B chord, and it happens to be B minor. So when we talked earlier about those intervals, we're going to do, we're going to do that here. So we've got the minor third first, and then we can jump up to the, to the major third above that second note that we landed on. So that'll be second fret on the A string, fifth fret on the A string, and then ninth fret on the A string. So we can start that with an arpeggio. You know, then we can figure out something to do once we get to the A chord. But OK, so we've got an arpeggio there. And then what I want to do is just start on the fifth note of the scale, because this is a 2 five, one progression. And normally, we could do a major arpeggio there if we wanted to and go. But to me, that wouldn't sound very jazzy to go. Although we might do two versions of this, because actually that does sound just fine. So um, why don't we do the other one first, and then we'll come back to that. So instead of doing the major arpeggio, why don't we just do what we did in the country line and walk down from the fifth note of the scale back to the first note of the scale. So we've got... And then when we get to the first note of the scale, um, we could do... Yeah, we could just do a major arpeggio two times. And then start over. This is not a super jazzy walking line, but it would still work. It's a functional line, but jazz players might be like, that doesn't really feel like walking. Walking should be more scalar than that, right? So what we'll do, what we'll do the second time through is We'll start on the same note, that B, because we're going to do a B minor chord, then go to an E7 chord, which it doesn't really matter. Just We'll just call it E major for now, and then you end up on A major. It doesn't matter with, with the bass line we're playing. It would matter for a chordal instrument playing along with you. OK, <clears throat> so we've got, instead of going and doing that whole arpeggio, why don't we do something that's a little more comfortable? We're going to do up the A major scale starting on that B note. So, you know, before we were going, what I want you to do is just start on the second note of that, but go up those same notes. But instead of going all the way up to there, 
let's just go up to the fourth note of the scale. Second, third, fourth, and then skip over the fifth note and go to the sixth note. Okay. And then this time for the five chord, we'll just do that arpeggio that we talked about before. So we'll start on the seventh fret of the A string. Then we'll go to the 11th fret. So that's our major third. And then we'll go up to the um, 14th fret on the A string after that. And then back to the 11th fret. So, so far we've got. Okay. And then it might be easy to just walk down the major scale. And then we can loop back, coming back to that two chord to do it the other way. So here's our goal. We went over two different variations to do this. We did the arpeggio on the B minor. Then we did the walk down from E, which is seventh fret on the A string. And then we went, um, we just arpeggiated twice after that. And then the second time through, we did that walk up the scale from B, skipping over the fifth note and going to the sixth note. And then we're doing the um, arpeggio, starting on the E note, which is the seventh fret on the A string. And then we're just gonna do an A major scale straight down. And then when we start over, um, just for the sake of the idea, in case you miss it the first time around, I'm going to loop it again and do both those variations again afterwards because they, they can go back to back. So I won't stop between, but I'll let you know when that happens. Here we go. So the first way through with the arpeggio first. One, two, three, four. Walk down. And then just major arpeggio two times. Here's the second time through, B, walk up the scale, skip to the fifth, sixth note, arpeggio, and then A major down. And now we start over, B minor arpeggio, the E walk down to A, then A major arpeggio two times. Then the second half, B up the scale, skip the fifth note, go to the sixth, arpeggio, and then walk down the A major scale. Cool. So that may be very confusing. You may want to watch that a few times and try to figure out what I'm saying as I'm as I'm talking through it, and then go back through and play it. Because it's a lot of stuff back to back. But that is a walking line that we can do on there. And that's it for the lesson portion. So now I'm here to answer your questions. Let me know if you have any questions. They can be pertaining to the challenge, um, which we're going to do the blues one that we did earlier at 100 beats per minute as our goal. And the reason I want you to do it 100 beats per minute is I think it would be really cool if, if I get several videos um, to just go ahead and kind of edit those together. So I might ask you guys, uh, I might ask you guys to, in addition to posting them on there, you might also need to send me the, the video file so that I can edit the pieces together. But um, I'll let you know more about that just for those who do um, take part in this challenge. So if I have if I have more than like four people or something doing the challenge, then, then I think we can do that. If I have a lot more than that, another thing that you guys could do is, um, well, I might just put a drum drum beat underneath it, but you know, if you know how to do a swing beat at 100 beats per minute, you know, I have a cajon down here, but you could add a beat to it. If you know how to solo over the blues, you could try soloing um, with an A blues scale over this line, but try to do it high up, you know, so. that kind of thing and do it at 100 beats per minute as well and uh, make sure it's over the 12 bar changes if that's too far out of your comfort zone or you don't know how to do that don't worry about it it's just an idea i had um, so you could do one 12 bar of walking and then you could do one 12 bar of solo if you wanted to if you had a loop pedal you could do 12 bars of walking and then loop it and have the solo play over the bass line um, so if any of you guys are are interested in doing that and feel like you understand how to do that well enough, please do. It could make it interesting.
but we'll leave those in in the comments below on here. And um, I'm going to try to make a Facebook post that you guys can comment on for that as well. And that'll be at facebook.com slash Stephen Cox Music, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-C-O-X Music, all one word. So facebook.com slash Stephen Cox Music would be a good place to post that as well. Um, I'm going to make a post for the one string blues challenge for you guys. But that's that'll be our goal for fun. Can you play Levitating from Dua Lipa? I would have to listen to the song. I, I'm not really familiar with that song. Um, I imagine I could figure something out for it. I don't, I don't know if it would be super accurate to it or not, but I'd have to learn it. I don't know it at the moment. That's a good question. Cool. So people seem to be fine with 100. Yeah. So we'll leave it at 100 for, for that. Cool. Cool. Hey, JP, how's it going? Anybody else got any questions? Um, what about uh, things like shifting? Do you have any questions about how to eyeball the notes? Were you able to do this? You can also just let me know in the comments. Yes, this seems pretty easy or this seems kind of tricky. Um, but I think we could do that one string blues challenge. Honestly, I just realized I have a, I, I think I made a Facebook group for the one string blues challenge. I may just share that link instead, but honestly, anywhere you post it, I can repost it to any of those places. Probably I can share it into that. So that they're all in one place, but, um, I'll put I'll put instructions in the in the description below here once once I get off the live stream. But let me know if you have any questions. Let's see. I'd like to have some of your drum beats to play with. I could make a you know that's that's another option. I could put a uh, a twelve bar drum drum groove to do that. I'm trying to think if I have one where I just have the drum track and it's a twelve bar. But um, if I do, that would be a cool thing, a cool thing. So um, you don't have to play it to that. I can mix it, you know, I can mix that in. But honestly, if you do a 12, if you do a 12 bar with a drum loop that you find on YouTube or on somewhere else, we could probably use that. Um, I'm, sh I'm sure, I'm sure it wouldn't matter too much. Um, so you could find a, if you could find a, a blues shuffle 12 bar YouTube backing track, you know, where it's just drums, then that might be kind of a cool way to go too, but you have to find it in A major. Well, you don't have to find an A major. It's if it if it has other instruments besides drums on it, you would though. Okay. Any other questions? I'll give you guys a minute to ask some questions. So I was trying to combine some of these ideas. Uh, there was another video I did about playing tenths up a major scale. And then when I was taking ideas from that, but I was also using a scale on one string to come up with the melody there too. 
so there are things you can add to combine to create a little composition like that too so that's something else you can do with the one string patterns and everything okay so zach you always enjoy throwing on background guitar drums 12 bar blues yeah so you could do that um i think it's better if you could if you could just find one that's just drums which that may be harder to do but i think it would just be like a 12 uh not a 12 8 pattern sorry but a blues shuffle at 100 and it's just where it's just the drum track so if you could find that, you could play along to that and share it. But um, honestly, it's better if I could just get the bass, the bass tracks from everybody. So what would be really, really cool to be able to mix them together, if we wanted to have drums playing under the whole entire thing, uh, would be to do it without the drum track or to do it where the drum track's playing in your ear, but you can't hear it. Um, because then that way I can add a drum track to it after the fact. Uh, maybe I can even talk to drummers about playing along to the track or something. We'll see. But that might be kind of fun. So it's, it's a thought. It's obviously just in its conception. But I will try to share all that with you guys and figure out what we end up doing. Let's see. Facebook. Actually, I think the page I made was the loop pedal challenge, not the one string blues challenge. So I will do that on my Stephen Cox music page where I just make a post about it and what I'll probably do is explain the directions and I'll, I'll try to make them a little more concise there and then you can just share it on Facebook that way and um, that's the idea but if you can record the audio separately or if you have the ability to send me the um, the video file so that I can take the audio off of it and kind of mix them together that might be kind of fun but it's an, it's an idea I've had for a while to do a blues song that way. It would be kind of cool if any of you guys know how to solo over the blues. It's like everybody else is playing the bass line and it's just going back and forth between people if I can get it all together and somebody else could just be on. You know, just soloing over it however you want to. So if you could just solo over a 12 bar blues change playing in your ear at 100 beats per minute, um, you could even play over your previous video if you have a computer and a phone. One could be playing it back on the phone and then you could um, record the other part. But I don't really want that those notes to be in the background just because we could mix it together a little bit better without that, I think, if that makes any sense. I don't know. Just really, just um, I'll come up with I'll come up with some more clear ideas because I think um, trying to trying to throw too much at you guys right now and I'll end up with a whole lot of different results. But I think it could be a lot of fun, so I'd, I'd like to do this. Oh, hey, John. Yeah. So some of this some of this stuff's kind of tricky. Um, trying to think what we could do for the one string for the one string challenge for people that this is a little too far advanced for. So one thing we could do is we could just have people going right and then that way maybe maybe we can put put them together but we'd just probably be linking people back to back just to include include everybody so there you just play along with the metronome set to 100 and all i did there was uh let's see you'd be on so be in it would end up being 16 open a strings then you go to the D note, fifth fret on the A, uh, a string, eight times. Then eight of the open A. Four of the seventh fret, four of the fifth fret, and then four of the open. And then that rhythm on the um, seventh fret on the A string. Boom, boom. So 16 open A's. Eight D's in a row, eight open A's, um, four, 
four um, seventh frets, four fifth fret, four open A strings, and then this rhythm on the seventh fret on the A string. So hopefully that makes enough sense for you. But that might be the beginner version. So if it's too hard to do all that other stuff, we can still be challenging yourself to play a blues progression on one string. It's just, we're not gonna do that whole, if it's too hard for you. Whoops, I went to the wrong chord. You get the idea. I'm, I might try to practice that one, see if I can get a double speed or something, but that might be kind of fun. Yeah, so hopefully so hopefully that's good for you guys. I'm probably gonna tab these, these options out so that you have a um, you have some options to play, but that's kind of the goal for now is just to put all that together. Does anybody else have any questions? Cool, cool. I think this could be a cool project. I'm not sure how well it'll how well it'll all gel together, but if we all did it to a metronome, so like if you have it on 100 beats per minute and you have that in your ear and you're filming yourself with a, a different device. So like, let's say you have, if you have a phone and you have a laptop, you could download a metronome on your phone and do that. And if your laptop has a webcam, you could record yourself. If you don't have a, a webcam on your laptop, you could record yourself with the phone and have your headphones plugged into the laptop with the metronome still in your ear, you know, in your headphones. And you could be playing along to the, um, to the laptop playing the metronome in your ear and recording with your phone. So those are the options, just kind of a fun little thing. Um, I don't know, it just, it'd just be kind of cool. And so you could, you could post it as a blues challenge. And then at some point I might ask you to keep, keep the file that you have, because if we can figure out how to upload them to one place, that'll make it easier for me to link them together without losing audio quality. Cause there's a way that I can put it all together, even if it's just like posted on Facebook or something. But um, I think that'll be a cool thing. So I'm going to add that link to the description once I make the post on Facebook. All right. Any last questions or anything else? Tabs would be helpful. Yes. I'll do, I'll do some tabs for you guys. Yeah. For this one. Cause this one is a little bit tricky. So we're just going to do this with the blues portion of what we talked about today, but that'll be our one string challenge. All right, guys, I will see you next Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern, excuse me, and um, I hope you had fun, and that's it for today. Bye for now.